St. John Lateran Basilica in Wallen is the Pope's home parish. Sculptures of the apostles line the sides, and close to the altar are the figures of Peter and Paul. Peter, keeper of the keys, the symbol, the sign of governance in the community of faith, and Paul, the missionary apostle to the Gentiles, who composed more than half of the New Testament books. Peter and Paul, an odd couple indeed, they interpreted the consequences of faith so differently. Peter, central in the leadership role, cautious like most leaders, tied more closely to Jewish observances, to tradition, wanting to be police people, protective of the gospel message entrusted to him. Paul, more adventuresome, pushing the boundaries, free-spirited, directly confrontative of James, leader of the Jerusalem church, and brashly standing up to Peter to his face, he said. But both Peter and Paul had at the core of their lives love for the crucified risen Lord, faith in the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit, and different they might be in their understandings of the way that faith was to be connected. But both stayed faithful, even to martyrdom. For both of them, the spotlight was on Christ, who alone is the head of the body, the church. Christ, who said to Peter in today's gospel, feed my sheep. They don't belong to you, Peter. Feed my lambs. They don't belong to you, Peter. They're my sheep. Christ, who came that all might have life in his name. Christ, the gift of the Father, who enlightens and strengthens and unifies his disciples. And that's the way it's been through all these centuries, with Christian leaders both ordained and lay. At times they are too cautious, too protective, not accommodating teachings to the changing circumstances of life. And at times they are arrogantly brash in the certainty of their conclusions. And if this were a history class, I could give chapter and verse, but as one example, I could point to the contradictions between the teachings on sacred scripture between Pius IX and the last part of the 19th century and Vatican Council in the middle of the 20th century. But a primary conviction for all believers is the abiding presence of Christ in the church. And if human wisdom, human ingenuity, human strength were its source, it would have died long centuries ago. We must always remember that the church is a human institution and its leaders are pilgrims seeking, sometimes blind when they should have seen and sometimes brash and condemnatory when they should have paused and weighed the evidence and listened to the wider community, the whole community of the church because if we are a pilgrim people searching, we are also a prophetic people in whom the Holy Spirit of God is working. Yet the church has always been a faithful witness to faith, to God, source of all life, to Jesus, gift of the Father, Lord and Savior, to, to the Holy Spirit ever present in the sacraments, in one another, in the sacred scriptures. Some years ago, there was a circle of young priests committed to work in the Hispanic ministry. They were bright and hardworking but their expectations of the leadership were so demanding, so exaggerated, so immediate, that a few grew discouraged and left the priesthood. One of my heroes is Father Carol Stumiller, a biblical scholar, and in his farm voice he wisely said, it takes the Catholic Church a long time, but finally we get it. Love is patient. Love endures all things. And an example of this is Father Hans Kuhn, Swiss theologian priest, 
From the time of Vatican Council II, he has been pushing the boundaries, and so he has been pushed aside by popes, granted a heretic or a dissident by many, yet he has stayed faithful in the church, pointing repeatedly to the clear teaching of Vatican II about collegiality and collaboration and subsidiarity, about unity, not uniformity in the church. Themes that need to be taken down from the attic and brushed off and applied to the realities of church life. On the other side of the aisle, our Catholics, both clerical and lay, upset by direct challenges given by Pope Francis to an economic system that seems to say, to the victor belongs the spoils, and to those who are outside, tough luck. Pope Francis, many Catholics are not at home with his informal, off-the-cuff informality and very human presence. But for all of us, no matter where we are, the call is to persevere in faith and trust, living joyfully in the church. It's our home. And so no matter what we are, by the way we think, it's our home. And we are an embracing group, we Catholics. We can have on the right Opus Dei and on the left people like me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay, because we all belong. We're all part of the community. But we have to persevere joyously with all the foibles and imperfections of the church, responding to life in the way of Jesus. And so the connecting point for our lives is living faith, responding consciously in mission, knowing ourselves as called and consecrated and sent to whomever we are, wherever we are. So did Peter and Paul surmount their differences as they experienced unity in the crucified and risen Lord. 